one and all, welcome back. Another edition of the Average Guy's Guide to Life podcast. You know who I am. You know what this is. You know what we're about to get into. We're about to get into some topics to discuss. And when I say discuss, I mean me talk about and you sit there and listen. Because you're good little shit. You're good little shit, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> but no, I, I do appreciate the feedback when I get it. So this is a, a discussion. It's just a one-sided discussion so far. You know, I try to display both sides of each thing that I talk about. I try. It's hard. It's hard because I'm biased when it comes to certain things. Definitely. But I, I, I try to be fair and balanced, you know, so that when we do have these open discussions about some testy topics at times, some controversial topics at times, I try to display my belief and the counter belief, you know. So we're going to open up by doing just that because I have a question for you. I got a really, really, really old question for you because this question has been around since dicks and vaginas. Like it's it's that old. It's been around for a long time. And it's like it's something that I haven't thought about in a while, but I was going through my social media feed and someone happened to mention it and they were discussing it like they were truly offended by the male perspective on this topic, certain male perspectives on this topic. So I'm going to give you the male perspective on this topic. And I'm, I'm, I'm me, I'm fucking me. So I feel like I could speak for all men. Okay. If you've got a problem with that, take it up with, I don't know, other men and they'll tell you. Yeah. Era, he can speak for us. Of course. Of course he can. Fuck you thought. (laughs) Um, but I also want to, clear up the air on the female perspective too. I I think there's some, I think there is some uh, truth and some legitimacy to her argument as well. So the topic is basically, would you marry a hoe? Basically like a hoe, a whore, a thought. People still say thought. A skank, skis, a unpaid sex worker. By unpaid, I mean, she isn't getting physical money. She's getting dick. You know, that is her reward. <laughs> uh, but, OK, this the question isn't seriously, would you marry a, a whore? Would you marry a hoe? You know, would you settle down with a thought? That ain't the question. The question is, does a body count matter? And for those of you who are uninitiated, the young people out there who came up um with this body count phrase, we used to call it something else, I forget, but a body count is basically how many people you done fucked, how many people did you let penetrate your cavity, or how many cavities have you penetrated with your dirty dick, how many dicks have you had in you with your dirty puss, that's the question, does a body count matter, okay, now, Let me just get this out of the way first and foremost. I think as an adult, a grown adult, as long as you vet the person that you're with, you inspect them thoroughly. Okay, you're compatible. You get along. They seem like a decent human being. Okay, they don't seem like they would be out there doing dicks or pounding puss all around the nation. If they're a decent human being and they seem clean and moral when you met them at that day moving forward, you should not ask anything about their sexual past. You shouldn't do it. You'll regret it every fucking time. Just don't ask. Ladies, don't ask the man. Man, for damn sure, don't ask the ladies. Just don't fucking ask because you don't want to know. It wasn't you. It wasn't your privates. Your privates weren't involved. So I want I want to get that out of the way. First. If you're an adult. And you are a logical forward thinking individual. 
And you know nothing nothing good can come out of you asking this fucking question. Just don't. Okay? But if you are one of those people who it will eat away at it. I don't know. Maybe you're insecure. Maybe you're OCD. You know? Maybe you're extremely paranoid about sexual diseases. I don't know. Whatever reason you have, you just have to ask this question. It can't go ignored. Okay. If you're one of those folks, my advice to you, well, I'm not even going to give advice. I'm just going to give perspective. Okay. I'm just going to give honest fucking perspective. And honestly, Honestly, I don't know a single person with the information available to them, honest information, like transparent information. Someone asked, okay, how many people you fucked? And then the reply was, I don't know, about 107. That's kind of a ridiculous number, but you know what I'm, well, what I'm leaning towards. If it's a number that's up there, okay. Even double digits is yeah, it's pushing it depending on your age. You know, in my age range, double digits is pushing it. But if it's a number that's unacceptable to you, I don't know a single person living, male or female, that would want to marry a hoe. Period. So if you you don't have the um, the will power to just n- not want to ask the question, to just omit it. And you have to know it. And someone's honest with you in their answer. And their answer is a large number. Nobody wants that. Male or female. Don't nobody want to marry a hoe. It's simple. Why? Because it doesn't. First of all, it's a character flaw. It's not about the sex. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck about the sex? I mean, the sex is a part of it. Because it. You know, you should you should have more control over your body. It's your body. But the the character flaw is not only does it show weakness. It shows a lack of patience and self-control. And it shows a lack of self-respect for your own body. Okay, these are facts. These are fucking facts. This isn't opinion. You know, there, there's a whole culture, like a slut culture. There's a slut walk, man and fe- male and female. The male slut culture has been around forever, you know, and it just hasn't been exposed as it is in 2020. But that's been around forever. That shit ain't cool either. Walk around with dirty dicks, you know. But the fact still remains that the sex It's on the top five list for reasons you wouldn't want to marry somebody like that. A hoe. Okay. But I think the number one thing that people are omitting or overlooking or not considering. When that question is asked and answered honestly, is that the person who was so um, free and giving away their body, that's a character flaw. That's the number one reason people wouldn't marry somebody promiscuous. It shows a lack of character. You're weak. You give in to physical temptation easily. That's that's the red flag. The red flag isn't your your vagina used up. I mean, that's part of it, too. Don't get me wrong. Like if everybody on on the block done had it, what the fuck? I look like I look like a clown. Marrying somebody, all my homies done hit. What the fuck? <laughs> no. You're a fucking clown. You're a clown. But other than that, it's weak. You know? You give in to sexual temptation easily. So, as a male or female, in the back of your head, it's always lingering. Is this person going to be easily tempted? By another person that isn't me. Now you've gone down this road. Okay. Men and women. 
You lying to your fucking self if you said that you haven't. Every person has. Every person. Some people stress on it more than others, but it's a normal thought process to have. That's why I just say don't ask. Don't ask. If they seem like a decent person and they don't come off as being a hoe, or they don't give you red flags of always bringing up exes or talking about their sexual exploits like they 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 just proud of what the fuck they did like huh you flung it huh now if they ain't that type of person just forget about it forget about it delete that part of your fucking brain it's hard to do yeah of course but nobody wants to marry a hoe nobody nobody you know if i was at the fuck if i was getting married right if I was getting married and I loved I loved my fiance and we at the fucking altar, the preacher doing his thing. And then he say, if anybody has any objection to this marriage, please speak now. Forever hold your peace. If a gang of niggas walk, just stood up <laughs> and was like, yeah, bro, I kind of fucked him. Sorry. And then next one say the same thing. And one at them and one at them. And then a, a woman stand up and was like, yeah, I, I, you know, we fucked too. <laughs> I wouldn't marry that person. Sorry. Sorry. Not sorry, actually. You know. But I just don't, I don't think you, you should ask. And I also don't think that geographically. It, it matters, like, because that was a part of this person's argument. They said, oh, I'm from this big city, you know, since I'm in a big city, of course, I'm going to do more dicks. What? Excuse me. Come again now. Come again. What What was that? Oh, because you live in an urban area, a large city with a higher population, you're going to do a higher population of penises. OK. I kind of see your logic there, you know, a little bit. But I kind of see uh, bullshit like that, that. That's stupid. That's stupid. It's your body. Just because it's just because you live in a building with, you know, a hundred people, you ain't got to fuck ten of them. Why? You have to fuck none of them. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the hell? That doesn't make any sense. OK, let's just say a person live in Iowa. So. Not as many is not that many people in Iowa as there is in fucking uh, Houston. Those two people could still just fuck the same amount of people. Don't matter. The person in Iowa could have fucked 20 people. They just fuck the same 20 people over and over again. They, they, they might have a small neighborhood and they just go around fucking the same 20 people. And the person in Houston might have fucked 20 people, too. It's a big city. Don't matter. It's like, ah, oh, no, it's a. Houston is a little bit bigger. We have more people. I should go out here and do more dicks. I should have a more dick average, a uh, higher dick average. You know, my my dick taking average ain't high enough. I'm doing the same amount of dicks as this bitch in Utah. That's not right. That's just dumb. Like, that's not an argument to have at all. That is not an argument to have at all. I personally have dated women that were from a large city. That were virgins or even been in one relationship. What do you say about them? What What's their excuse? I, I mean, what? That they never go outside? And they, they never went to school, grocery shopping, work, nothing? Because according to this person's logic, by default, living in a large city means that you have a, a large Head count. To that, madam, I say, uh, go fuck yourself. That's dumb. That's fucking stupid. Okay? Doesn't matter where you're from geographically. Now, that, there is no other side to. I try to be unbiased with my opinions here. But that, there is no other side to. That's just a dumb take. That, that's a dumb opinion to have. Okay? Just because you did plenty of dicks and your excuse is that, you know, you live in an in urban area, highly populated area that don't make that the blanket excuse for all women. Because it's dumb, 
that would be like me saying, okay, I, I'm a man. I live in a highly populated area. So uh, it's it's only, you know, scientific that I'm going to go fuck as many women as I can. It's it's 10 million here. I want at least, you know, 500,000. Like, what the hell? That's not even, you know, that's not even 1%. <laughs> the fuck? It's dumb. Okay. Cut it out. Just fucking cut it out. Anyway. Let me stop hammering on this topic because it's dumb. Like, at the end of the day, my advice, I said I wasn't going to give any, but I wasn't going to give any any, uh, advice on just the, the body count in general. But don't open that door. That's my advice. If you have suspicions about sexual activity and exploits and it's eating away at your conscience and you have to know then by all means, do your thing, you know, just do it. If you can't live without knowing and, you know, someone is, is giving you red flags, then ask and just cut ties. After you ask, just disappear because it's not, it's not going to be the same. It never is. I always see myself as the only person that my, that I'm, I always see myself as, the only guy that matters at that time and no one else came before me. And if it's a strong connection, no one, no one's going to come after me. I don't care. No one else existed unless there's children. Then that comes, then it becomes apparent that there was someone before you. <laughs> it's very apparent. There's a little person walking around, um, uh, but that's why I, I don't date women with children. Sorry. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Because um, I don't have any. I don't have any. And that's another control issue to me. Um, the excuse is that, oh, I was tricked into having his baby. Well, you need to pick your man better. OK, don't blame. Don't blame the guy for tricking you. Blame yourself for getting tricked. If you were with someone for a decent amount of time, hopefully you were before you we're in a position to have their child. Um, but just, you know, hypothetically speaking here, if you were with someone long enough to have their child, you should have known who they really were by then. And if you aren't one million percent sure that you're going to marry this person, just don't fucking do it. Just don't do it. Force them to wear a condom. If you don't want to, fuck them. You know, just pick your mate better. That's all I'm saying. Don't blame the guy for tricking you. I mean, it's his fault. It's his fault, too. Don't get me wrong, because men are malicious, manipulative fucks when it comes to sex. We don't we don't think all the time. That's why I tell um, any man that will listen. And I'm telling you this on the other end of this podcast. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're going on a date, a promising date with an attractive young lady, before you go on that date, beat your dick. Just do it. Masturbate. Just do it. Rub on out. To clear you, clear the cobwebs out your head. Stop thinking about tits and ass, you know. And if you still like this person <laughs> after the date. Then you know you got you got a good one, you know, because men that you have to get the fucking demons out. You have to. It's going to cloud your fucking vision, especially if you don't have that shit under control. If you don't have, you know, if you don't have the mental fortitude to just block those thoughts out, just rub one out, guy. Just do that and then go go on your fucking, you know, Wendy's date or some shit. Anyway, now, let me get off of the dating topic. I can talk about that for the rest of my life because I find people and their behavior interesting. But you know that there were some events that happened this past weekend. And by events, I mean um, the normal fuckery, uh, the Oscars. I didn't watch it. I'm not going to watch it. Um, I'm not going to read the headlines. I did read one. I did read one because I was curious to know if Joaquin Phoenix won for the Joker, if the Joker won any awards. 
Um, because I just like to know that good films get recognized. Now, don't get me wrong. I think award shows are bullshit. A bunch of entitled people getting an award for reading other people's words on a script and pretending like it's real life. Like, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous when you think about it. Like, these people are multimillionaires patting each other on the back saying, good job. You did a very nice job playing pretend, playing dress up. Good job. Um, <laughs> but the art in itself, movie making and, and media in general, if something is excellent, uh, I do, I do like it to be appreciated. I do feel like it should be appreciated in the highest category. Okay. So the award itself is a piece of shit to me. Okay. But the acknowledgement that everyone virtually knew that this man, um, portray a character so well. It has to be acknowledged, you know, the I mean, whether you're getting awarded for it or not, I think that's good. I think that's a good idea that the acknowledgement of someone's craft when they reach the peak of their craft and that it's undeniable. That's excellent. But all the ambiance and the bullshit and the politically charged acceptance speeches, that's all horseshit. They need to get that out of the way. Like, come on. Who gives a fuck? You're accepting a pretend made up award for pretending to be someone in front of a camera. You're not that important, people. What we should have, this is going to sound like some fucking red state shit, but what we should have is an award for an award ceremony and televised show. For everyone who's a public servant of some sort, police officer of the year, school teacher of the year, emergency room operator of the year, or surgeon, I should say, <laughs> surgeon, I should say, you know, someone who, who, you know, saved someone's life who was shot fucking 19 times, a teacher who taught someone to read. You know, a police officer who, who jumped in front of a, 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 a innocent civilian to stop them from getting shot. You know what the fuck I mean? Like a firefighter who went into a building and saved, you know, everyone in the retirement home and carried them out on his shoulders one at a time. Like on a fucking, you know, television show. <laughs> Like on the television, you come full circle, don't you? Um, that's what I would like to see. I mean, I wouldn't watch it. it. Sounds boring as fuck. I wouldn't watch it. But those are the people that really need the awards. And if anything, the uh, the people that write these scripts, that write the words, you know, the geniuses behind the behind the scenes, behind the cameras, they need they need uh, awards too. Who gives a fuck what? Like, I don't give a shit what dress this bitch is wearing. Like, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Cool. She's wearing a, a you know, $20,000 very thin layer of fabric. Fancily draped over her shoulder. Like, who gives a fuck? No one cares. And if you do care, why? Explain this to me, please makes no sense these people should not be celebrated they already are with their multi-million dollar paychecks go eat a dick okay anyway the oscars happened i didn't watch it don't care don't care for any award shows don't care um the fact that you get to do something in the liberal arts as your real job and being paid handsomely for it that is award enough. Okay. Don't give a fuck what side of the political spectrum you sit on. Don't give a shit. Okay. You 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 played a character on a movie and 
the character that you played in the movie is probably isn't who you are in real life remotely like not even close and you're gonna get on stage and tell me how how you fucking believe you know um global warming isn't a big enough issue okay i agree with you but who, who the fuck are you you just played some mobster who was a fucking serial killer maniac <laughs> That's the last thing I remember you as. Now you're going to tell me to come up here and save the whales? Like, bitch, shut your ass up. Yeah. Anyway. Damn, I'm, I'm an irritable person, aren't I? I'm, I sound very miserable. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not miserable, people. Okay? I'm not, I'm not a miserable person. I live a decent life. Okay? <laughs> I don't want to kill myself not anymore. <laughs> Only sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not miserable. I, you know, I just find I just find certain things that we've created in our societies, the things that we create to get by, you know, to keep our eyes busy, to keep our minds moving. Some of it is fucking ridiculous, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to point out the ridiculous. And and just outrageously idiotic. That's what I'm here to do. If you don't like that, then I apologize. Anyway, um, let's see. I, I, what am I going to close this up with today? I got some options. Um, I watched the XFL. That was a. Uh, I mean, it's football. I mean, it's football. I like it. Uh, it's not the NFL. It's for sure not the NFL. I don't get that same feeling of excitement and anticipation that I do before I watch an NFL game because I'm, I'm familiar with it. I have allegiances. I root for certain teams. Of course, I root for my Pats. Um, so it is it's, for now. It's just viewing pleasure like it's just football. You know, it doesn't have the history of you know excellence and it doesn't have the history of um consistency and there is no allegiance yet there is no anticipation built built up for this league right now it's just your eyes being busy watching football while you're waiting on the nfl to come back and i mean there's a market for that i don't know how sustainable that market is and how long term this project can potentially last but I am, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. Right now, I am a viewer. I am a viewer of the XFL. Maybe by the end of the season, I've I seen some spectacular games. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not convinced that that would happen. But, you know, anything can happen, I guess. But as of now, I'm just a viewer. By the end of the season, I could possibly possibly be a fan well i don't think anyone is a fan of it now everyone is just kind of figuring it out you know it's like when you're running your shower water when you take a shower in the morning you know you want to make sure it's not too hot or not too cold so you put your put your hand out there to test it you know just put your hand out that's that's what we're all doing now as football fans we're just kind of putting our hand out there to test test the, the temperature you know, right now it's kind of, yeah, kind of, kind of lukewarm. Me, I like my showers a little on the hot side. So we'll see how that goes. Um, there was also a UFC event. Um, the card wasn't, well, the card wasn't memorable uh, as a whole. The card wasn't memorable. Um, but the main event sure was. John Jones versus Dominic Reyes. Now, that, if you haven't seen the fight, and if you don't follow mixed martial arts, that was probably the worst judging call. Like, the worst unanimous decision. The I mean, just the worst judge, judging, scoring, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It was the worst result 
in a championship fight since Johnny Hendricks got robbed in that GSP fight. It's probably more worse than that. Um, UFC, I believe, was it 247, I think. And John Jones versus Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes uh, was robbed. A lot of people don't aren't going to call it a robbery. I'm going to call it a robbery. Clear and simple. He was robbed. If you don't want to call it a robbery, please tell me why. Because the vast majority of MMA experts who watched that fight, even the president of the UFC, scored that fight 3-2 Reyes. And they gave it to John Jones. If that's not a robbery, what is? They took his victory. He was robbed of his victory, of the title, of being the man to beat John Jones, which he did. The first three rounds, he beat John Jones. And if you don't know, if you don't follow the, the sport, there's only five rounds in a fight. So if you win the first three, fight over. All you have to do is coast, pretty much. And Dominic Reyes didn't even coast. He put up a good fight in that fourth round. John Jones definitively won the fifth, but it wasn't by blowout. He didn't knock him down. You know, and people people um, defending the Jones decision, they're talking about the takedowns. Takedowns my ass. What the fuck? Those aren't takedowns. Those were slight inconveniences. John Jones took him down, quote unquote, for about three seconds each time because Dominic Reyes popped right back up. He sat down and then was like, nope, and got right back up. But that was in the fourth and the fifth round after Dominic Reyes had already won the first three. So what the fuck do takedowns count for? Or attempted takedowns or half-hearted ass takedowns. Takedowns that there was no control, there was no advancing of position. And Dominic and, and uh John Jones had his back when he was standing back up. So he took him down, Dominic Reyes got back up, and Do John Jones tried to get a hook in and get his back while he was already standing. And he didn't even get his back entirely. He just got one hook in the left leg. And Dominic Reyes immediately spun out in like half a second. It was an egregious decision. It's horrible. Fucking horrible. I love, I love mixed martial arts. It is my favorite sport right now. I didn't think anything could overtake football, but MMA has because it's just a higher frequency of it. There's more fights. There's more fights. Like any given weekend, I could watch a fight. You know, I have to live fucking eight months of my life without meaningful football games, you know. But, you know, last this past weekend, there was meaningful fights. This upcoming weekend, there's going to be some more meaningful fights. Like, sorry, sorry, football. You will always have a special place in my heart. And when you come back, NFL football, I mean, when you come back, I will be in front of my TV again. You know, maybe it'll be tied with MMA, but that that was just a horrible fucking call, man. Fucking horrible, horrible. And I went back and I watched it again, and I'm even more convinced that Dominic Reyes was robbed. I don't know, and and the <laughs> the comical part of it is one of the judges, and I mean comical in a sad way uh, is one of the judges scored four rounds for John Jones four four rounds to one now let me paint the picture for you here Dominic Reyes outstruck meaning punches and kicks and knees and elbows and all that stuff he outstruck John Jones he landed more significant strikes than John Jones in the first three rounds. John Jones did not hit 
Dominic Reyes as many times as Dominic Reyes hit John Jones in the first three rounds. So how in the fuck, how in the flying fuck can a judge score that fight 4-1? Four rounds to one for John Jones. Okay. Let me not. Okay. Let me not ramble on. Blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ. I fucking forgot how to speak English again. Let me not ramble on too long about this topic. Because just thinking about it is making me upset again. Because when it happened, I fucking threw my tablet down. Like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't fucking believe it. I'm like, what? What? But, okay. I mean, you can't change it now. I just... I just hope that, you know, everyone, like I said about the Joker, like I said about the Joker, it's not the award that matters. And in this occasion, in fighting, it's not the belt that matters here. It's not even the judge's decision. It's about people that know fighting and that will appreciate it. So you appreciate the performance Dominic Reyes has. And in the MMA community, the vast majority of us know what we saw. And Dominic Reyes won that fight. Period. Motherfucker goddamn period. Okay? Anyway. Uh, that's going to be the podcast. I done took too much of your time already. Bye.